line. Elise Stefanik, whom everyone thinks is kind of like an odds-on favorite at eight. Uh, Tim Scott. Uh, wow, Tim. Hmm. Eight percent after all of that. Uh, and I think it's important to note that, you know, a lot of folks have been talking up the whole Christy Nome Trump angle. What's your <laughs> take here? How, how do you see these sweepstakes sort of playing out? Well, you and I both know from our years at CPAC <laughs> that the straw poll isn't exactly the most scientific or reliable poll. I mean, Ron Paul used to win that thing all the time. So I'm going to dismiss that as, as anything that's serious. But I can also tell you, those who know, um, Christy Noem will never be vice president. She'll never be a, a pick for Trump because of some of her behavior uh, with other people in the Trump circles. So that will disqualify her off the top. And again, Again, this is one of those celebrity, um, you know, contests where it's like, oh, who was there? Who was top of mind? And oh, yeah, we like Christy. No, it's not. It, it, it's not happening with her. Um, now, Elise Stefanik, on the other hand, does have a, a greater chance because she has been an absolute sycophant. And she has decided to completely sell her soul to remake herself into a, a Trumplican in ways that are uh, hard to imagine that someone could be such a polar opposite of what they used to be when they first came into Congress. Elise Stefanik is a perfect example of that, of someone who's sold everything out to for political ambition. So to the point where she's defending Donald Trump in his comments calling January 6th uh, defendants and prisoners, political prisoners. I mean, it's really um, pretty obnoxious and outrageous with how low she has gone. Um, but I mean, she's just par, par for the courts. The fact that I, I just have to go back to the Mitch McConnell thing for a second. The fact that Mitch McConnell, seriously, Michael, that Mitch McConnell would even be considering uh, endorsing Donald Trump after everything that Trump has done to him as well. I mean, calling his wife all kinds of ethnic slurs, calling him a piece of crap, according to Maggie Haberman's book, making fun of him and his age, saying all of these disparaging things about him. And, and Mitch McConnell can't stand Donald Trump. He knows that he is someone who isn't a serious yeah. person. But he's willing to do this, which is like if, Trump, if, if McConnell comes out and endorses Trump, what that does is that once again, it opens up the others in the Senate and other donors yeah. to say that Donald Trump is someone we can still support, despite everything he's done. I mean, the day Mitch McConnell endorses Donald Trump, you might as well write the obituary for the Republican Party because it is dead and buried from any image and likeness in which that you and I, the party that we joined, or the party that Reagan was the leader of, or the party that Bill Buckley said we're supposed to be as conservatives, the ones that yell stop athwart history when no one else will, that party is dead and gone. Because my God, could you be any more of a coward, Mitch McConnell, when you're in a position to actually say, no, we cannot allow someone like this to be a, a, the president of the United States yeah. again. But because of well, political expediency, he's willing to do it. It's really quite pathetic. Well, we're not short on drama in the Republican Party at this point. So <laughs> that's why I up, left it, my friend. The, <laughs> One of many uh, reasons. Uh, the next episode is the GOP turns uh, coming soon. <laughs> Doug Jones and Tara Stepmayer, thank you both very much. Up next on the readout, Trump is unsurprisingly using plain old racism and stereotypes to claim that he has the vote of the black people. And yes, he said, actually, I quote, the black people. The readout continues after this. Type 2 diabetes? Discover the Ozempic Trizone. Oh, 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 Ozempic. I got the power of three. Oh. I lowered my A1C.